Hi, I'm Phil Hill and welcome back to eLiterate TV. Today we're with Tawana Dillahunt from the University of Michigan and you've received a grant as part of the MOOC research initiative. Could you tell me a little bit about the project? Sure, Phil. So I'm interested in, in understanding how MOOC learners who say they can't afford a formal education are using these MOOCs for economic mobility. So how okay. are people going out and, and finding jobs in our existing cohort of MOOC learners? Um, so, you know, people talk about um, MOOCs as having or being an opportunity for, for um, people to receive free education and, and an opportunity for those who are low income or, or mm -hmm. uh, unemployed to, you know, use these platforms as a, as a pathway um, yeah. for economic mobility. And, and what, I, what we wanted to do, so Stephanie Teasley and I are on this grant, what we wanted to do was to explore how existing MOOC learners who say they cannot afford a formal education based on a survey that we've conducted with our Coursera courses. Mm -hmm. There is only about 10% of this population, so about 650 people who say they can't afford a formal education, so we want to compare that group to others, so those who, who aren't. Well, we can't assume that they they don't have enough based on the surveys. Sure, um, it's just the other group. Uh -huh. So what we're finding is that I'd say there are three key things. So sure. those taking the MOOCs are less likely to be full-time students. Research shows that the majority of MOOC learners have bachelor's degrees sure. and master's degrees. So it's like over 70, 79 percent have higher education. But among this target population, we're finding that um, most of them, or 64 percent of them, have less than a bachelor's degree. So okay. we're finding that you know those who can't afford formal education are going in with with lower education levels and and perhaps you know moving up. Sure. Um, the education ladder as a um, uh, using these MOOCs as a way to move up the ladder. So that's uh, looking at sort of their demographics or going in position. Does the research actually also get into what their needs are or like uh, how MOOCs might affect them or what they would need to do to be to be able to use them? Right. That's a great question. And it's actually part two okay. of our grant. So the first part is just understanding the, the statistics, you know, descriptive statistics, to understand, you know, demographics, who the the group okay. is. And then uh, the second part is actually interviewing uh, some of these individuals. We're going to um, target individuals in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, because we like to have face-to-face -face, sure. uh, interviews with, with these students to understand the opportunity uh, to build, you know, better MOOCs in the future to help, you know, people find employment. Sure. Uh, yeah. no. That sounds fascinating because I know there's a lot of questions about disadvantaged people and it's good to hear that we're actually getting into real results, studying them, not just trying to say that we're going to solve the right, problem. Right, right. So as you move forward, as you get the full set of results, what else are you expecting to learn? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm expecting to, to learn from individuals, you know, what, what types of courses would they like to see and what are the tangible like results? What are the things that they're showing employers? What are the things that they're putting on their resumes? Are people actually going out and, and creating portfolios as a result of, of taking these courses? Sure. I mean, I think that would be great. Um, it's one thing to say that you've gotten a certificate. It's another thing to say, here's what I did with this education. And, you know, I was able, possibly I was able to find a job with it. Sure. All right, thinking more broadly than just your project, a year from now, what do you think we'll know or we should know about MOOCs that we don't know about today? Uh, I think a year from now what we should know about MOOCs is, um, and I can't help but to jump in and say what I would like to know is, how are people uh, learning um, in, in groups? I mean, today we, we and people say, well, MOOCs, is, they're silos. You're, you're learning um, without having the benefit of you're having uh, classmates and that kind of thing. But it's possible that people are learning in, in, in groups or they're meeting offline sure. to, to study these. So I think a year from now, I would, I would like to um, you know, understand better if that's happening and how is it happening. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is a great conversation today, and I want to thank Tawana Dillahunt for uh, joining us. All thank right. You. Thank you, Phil.